The hectic lifestyle of a big metropolis is seems so far away and foreign here, nobody has to run to catch a bus like their life depends on it, or get their senses overloaded by ne the neon lights and traffic jams. I want to live in a small town, and also, why the fuck are they honestly pulling it? They're just, like, using these big words just so people will trip on them when they try to read it. It's like a anti-piracy thing or something, I don't know. I feel surprisingly optimistic about this new life of mine. Looking at my new hometown, even if it's going to be mine for only one short year. You could fucking move there! Pessimistic little bastard. Finding out about my illness and having to move away from home all came so suddenly. I haven't had time to think how I feel about it. When I step out of the shadow of the clock tower to open, I feel warmth touching my back. The sun shines from a perfectly clear cerulean sky. Terribly sorry guys, I had to take a little bathroom break and then I had to restoke my fire because it's fucking cold. Our heater doesn't work so instead I decided to start my nice little fireplace up. So let's just continue on with it, shall we? Shall we? The sun shines perfectly from a clear cerulean sky. A cool breeze sweeping over the rooftop makes me shiver, but only briefly. The wind carries the scent of the trees and flowers, not smog and car exhaust like it used to just a few weeks ago. Emmy settles on a bench with Rin in tow and produces one big and two small lunch boxes from her bag. Come on, Sal, what are you waiting for? She's beckoning me to join them, making room on the already small bench. I assume she gets the large one? I seat myself on the corner of the bench to take as little space as possible. It's pretty cramped, but somehow all three of us fit on it. Impressive view. Emmy suppre suppresses a giggle and places her lunchbox in front of Rin and hands another lunchbox to me. Here you go, lunch, as promised. Homemade, no less. I'm impressed. Wow, this looks really good. Thanks, I make it myself when I can. Conversation dies off as I set about the business of feeding myself. something that Rin might have had a lot of trouble with. Taking a few bites, I glance up and notice Rin deftly opening a lunchbox and popping a fork full of food into her mouth using only her feet. I have to make the jokes, I'm sorry guys, but I have to make the jokes about the controversial humor that are popping up. They're so perfect. I mean, give me a five- oh wait, she can't. Okay, I'm sorry. Even though I've seen it before, I can't help but be impressed at her dexterity. It's also a reminder of the sort of place I am in right now. Will I ever get used to the sights such as this? I can't decide if I'm getting used to such a thing. Would be a good thing or a bad thing either. Does getting used to this place mean that I'm giving up on being a normal person? Or does it mean that I'm becoming more understanding about those around me? I'm distracted from my thoughts by the sight of Emmy tearing into her lunch as if it had insulted her ancestors. Lunch, you have insulted my ancestors. It is time to, for me to eat you. You seem pretty hungry. Emmy looks up, mouth half full and swallows before nodding. But well, morning run always works up an appetite. Then eat breakfast! Which is great because then I burn through lunch pretty quickly. Helps me keep my girlish figure. I'll give her that. What would happen if you'd lose it? Would you become a man? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. 
I very nearly choke on my lunch. Try not to laugh. <laughs> it's a figure of speech. Does your figure have to run in the mornings too? <laughs> Fuck yes. <laughs> Do you always talk like this? Talk like what? Like what? I think that answers my question. And never mind. So, uh, I struggled to think of small talk and settle up, settle on the obvious question. How'd you two meet? Rin seemed c content to let Emmy answer the question. Someone in the housing department thought we'd complement each other well, so we were assigned rooms next to one another. Complement each other? Like shoes and a suit. Huh? I understood the analogy. Emmy giggles at my confusion. Put us together and we've got all our limbs, get it? That's a depressing way to think about it. Ah. Uh, so I started helping Rin get ready in the mornings and that was that. I mean, you can't help someone by someone get dressed every morning and not get along. I see. Rin chooses this moment to interject. I have trouble with shirts. Wouldn't you have problems with, like, zippers and buttons on your pants, too? Right, that seems fairly obvious. Really? Yes, Rin. Really. Kind of? <laughs> this isn't helping, but at least Emmy seems to find the whole thing funny. I'm finding this... Hilarious. That combined with the fact that Rin is genuinely curious makes me feel slightly better and yet confused. I mean, you've got no arms. So, uh, putting on a shirt seems like one of those things that would be difficult. You know what, I'm just going to stop talking now. It'll save me a lot of trouble on the long run. Long run? Long run. I'm... I'm slurring my words today. It's mainly because I'm thirsty. I'm also thinking of food, so I'm fucking hungry. Rin nods in what I suspect is meant to be a sage manner. I see. I see, Sensei. The conversation dies as I turn my attention back to my lunch. Really quite good. Emmy finishes her lunch first and makes a contented noise. Ah. Ah, that was good. As she busies herself with cleaning up her lunch, Rin speaks up. I'm thirsty. Oh, I almost forgot about that. Sorry. With the floor, she reaches into her bag and removes a trio of juice boxes. Fucking juice boxes? I guess it's better than nothing, but a juice box? She tosses me one that appears to be cranberry juice. Rin that appears to be some kind of strawberry milk. That's got to be disgusting if it's been in her bag all day. Complete with pink color scheme and keeps... An equally pink box of some kind of fruit punch for herself. So I have to drink the shit juice, or the the Hershey squirt juice, and she gets fucking fruit punch. Then again, Rin doesn't have it good either. She has, like, rotten ass, like, day old, in the sun, strawberry milk, so... I like my milk, like, fucking cold as shit and not with a hint of that weird sourness that it gets after a week. I go through like several gallons of milk a week because I drink it a lot. Rin dexterous, dexterously 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 I don't know stra stabs her straw through the top of her box and begins to drink. I should probably get closer to the screen so I can see it better, probably. I'm once again impressed by how flexible she is. By this time, I keep my commit comment to myself. <laughs> She's flexible, guys. Like, extremely flexible. Do you want to have some fun with that? <laughs> no, I'm just 
that's that's horrible. She's mine. Back off. Um, somehow I don't think either Emmy or Rin are the sorts of people to think twice about the way they work around their particular disabilities. Rin especially so. Indeed, she gives off the impression of being entirely unaware that she's missing any limbs at all. Whether or not that's a conscious decision is another matter. I'm honestly not sure. So, Hisao, how do you like it up here? Hmm? It's quite nice, actually. I like high places for the view. Thanks for inviting me up here. And for the lunch, too. Emmy grins, a thousand watt grin, pleased by my response, I suppose. Shocking. No problem! Feel free to eat with us next time, okay? Okay. Although I'm a little weirded out by the one I opened when I closed, cute little eh, thing that you're doing. I won't make you a lunch, but you can bring your own up here. No lunch service? I don't know. Emmy looks mock offended, trying to take advantage of my good nature. The nerve. She giggles. I would definitely take advantage of your good name. Okay, I'm done with these jokes. Well, if that's your answer, I guess Rin and I will be able. We'll just eat it. We'll just keep eating lunch all alone. I'm suddenly assaulted by the most heart-rending puppy dog eyes I've ever seen. As Emmy bounces. Kidding, I was kidding. Love to eat up lunch up here again. Good location, and the company's okay, too. Emmy frowns a bit at my declaration of okay, but seems happy enough that I've accepted her invitation. I guess this makes us friends now, or at least acquaintances. The lunch bell rings, signaling a return downstairs. Rin, you didn't finish your lunch again. I wasn't that hungry. If you don't eat more, you're going to fade away. Uh, yeah, probably. Rin shrugs as if this is an acceptable risk. Come on, we'd better get going. The three of us head down the stairs together. The afternoon class passes. Once again, I find myself without a plan for something to do after school. So I head to the library to return a couple of books I finished reading. <sniffs> My nose is so clogged. Walking inside, I see there are about as many students here as there were on Tuesday, all the more evident for the almost total silence enveloping the room. As I dropped the books I'd borrowed into the return slot on the cow, what the fuck happened? Yuko suddenly pops up from behind it, quite startled from the banging they make as they hit the trolley next to her. Ah, sorry Yuko, I didn't mean to startle you. No, no, that's fine, it happens a lot. I'm used to it by now. Um, can I help you? It's okay, I think I know where everything is, thanks anyway. I suppose I'll grab another book or two while I'm here. There's not much else to do, and after reading so much during my stay in the hospital, it's becoming a hard habit to break. I wander down to the fiction section toward the back of the library, scanning the bookshelves for anything that catches my eye. As I do, I look over to the corner where Hanako had been the last time I was here, not really expecting anything to come of it. Surprisingly, though, she's there, absorbed completely in a fairly thick book. I decide against intruding on her like last time and get back to finding reading material. But she was looking at me! After an indiscernible... Bleh, these words! After an indiscernible amount of time pursuing the aisles, I finally decide on a couple of books to get and slide them off the shelf. With a minimum of fuss, I quickly walk over the counter, check out my books, and pop them into my bag as I walk out. 
By the time I leave the main building, sunset isn't too far away. A small trickle of students remain, but the majority have left, presumably to their homes and dorms. The picture is way too fucking bright. I need sunglasses. I guess I need to buy some supplies. I can't live off cafeteria food and eating out for my entire stay here. As I leave for the gate, I make a few loud stretches to try and stave off the tiredness that I've accumulated over the week. After passing through and rounding the corner, through, though, I see a solitary fixture. Fig I see a solitary fixture figure walking downhill. Let's just take a moment for me to collect my fucking brain. Uh, downhill towards the small town below. The color of her hair and tapping of her cane are unmistakable. Plus, there's a picture of her right here. I quickly walk up to her, which seems to catch her attention with a word needing to be said. Hi, Lily. She takes a moment to place the voice, slightly adjusting her head to face a bit more towards the source of my voice as she does. The sound? Yep, that's me. She seems to have a good memory for voices. The fact that she actually remembered is a pleasant surprise. Good evening, what brings you here? Once again, she gives a small polite bow, and once again I reply in kind before realizing that I needn't do so. Just going into town, you? My, my, what a coincidence. Doing the same thing, eh? Of course she is! Why the f- Why else? Why would she be on the road if she wasn't? Hmm, I usually go shopping on Fridays. Oh.